as you look at what's happening at UT in Texas, as you look at what's happening at Columbia, as you look at what's happening at Yale, et cetera, Harvard. I think that we do have a real problem. And a lot of people want to blame TikTok. Others want to blame Joe Biden. It may be a combination of both. But you know, there's another, another company that needs to be looked at, another network that needs to be looked at for promoting, in my estimation, a kind of hate. And that would be MSNBC. And there is one anchor in particular over there who is beyond irresponsible. I mean, Rachel Maddow is, is bad enough, but she's not on the air every night anymore. That was, be I mean, I used to watch that and think this woman is certifiable. I mean, she's just going down some kind of rabbit hole with a bunch of insanity. Here to take her place is a woman named Joy Reid. And I'm gonna tell you this, MSNBC has a real Reid problem. Joy Reid is, in my estimation, a very angry woman and a very racist woman herself who wants to use race, wants to bait people into this kind of race war in an absolutely disgusting kind of way. I mean, she, she's ginning up something to try to sow some kind of hate against Americans that don't look like her. And she's using Donald Trump to do this. I mean, can you imagine if a white anchor were saying the things that Joy Reid is saying right now? It would not be tolerated because you know what? It shouldn't be tolerated. Nobody should talk like this, period. No one should talk like this. I mean, this is the latest and greatest, some wacky thing about how he, Donald Trump, tormented her as a teenager in 1980. I mean, this woman considers herself a journalist. Frankly, I'd fire her today. Watch it. First ever trial of a former American president as Donald Trump spent a second day in court before a Manhattan jury. It was a day that I can say I witnessed personally as I took my turn to be at the courthouse. And has been the case so far, there were no throngs of Trump supporters outside raising hell on his behalf. I only noticed this one guy who had a crucifix and rang a loud bell while wearing a t-shirt declaring that the three greatest U.S. presidents were George Washington, John F. Kennedy, and Donald Trump. Other than that, for all the giant barricades erected downtown, the largest numbers present were police officers and reporters, plus a couple of adorable middle schoolers who came down to see the events from inside court. Inside the courthouse, I started out as team overflow room, and then, through the endless grace of Lisa Rubin, moved to the main courtroom for the second half of the day. And while I've written a book about Donald Trump called The Man Who Sold America, for which I interviewed many a Trump person and former campaign staffers, etc., today was the first time I've actually been in the same room with Donald Trump, the tormentor of black teenagers like myself in the late 1980s when the Central Park Five trial took place in that very same courthouse. What I can tell you is that he is taller than you might expect and walks in a gait that is shufflier than you'd think, kind of a shuffly waddle. And he's definitely a scowler, although who wouldn't be scowly facing 34 criminal counts in a case that could, in theory, send you to prison? I can also confirm that he has a strangely orange hue, although lighter orange now that he's out of the Florida sun and away from the tanning beds. And whoever does his hair masks the thinning in the back and on top with some okay. deft is cantilevering. It it's, it, I mean, is it not pathetic? But w what I was struck by was her mention of the Central Park Five, the five black and Latino men who were wrongly accused of a, a really brutal crime. So some of you may remember that. Um, somehow that's entirely Donald Trump's fault because everybody at the time because they were wrongly accused and it all came out after the fact, but he said some things at the time about them that was probably pretty consistent with some of the things that he said about migrants, et cetera. And somehow now he is the entire reason that she had a tough teenage existence <laughs> right? in New York. I I'm sorry, Joy. You know what? You can't blame everything on Donald Trump. You really can't. Uh, there was a lot of blame to go around in that particular situation. There were a lot of people 
that had believed that they were guilty. And again, I want to point out that they were wrongly accused, and that is very tragic, of course. But to blame it all on Trump, really, lady? I mean, you got a chip on your shoulder. You got a really big chip on her shoulder. That comes on the heels of what she said the other day when she went on and on and on about how great it was that, well, there were black prosecutors going after Donald Trump. I mean, why are we making this? In all seriousness, why are we making this black versus white? They accused Donald Trump of doing that. I don't think so. This woman is feeding the fans of that fire. Is she not? Watch. In prison. But for me, there is something wonderfully poetic about the fact that despite the fact that even if convicted, he's not going to go to prison, the first person to actually criminally prosecute Donald Trump is a black Harvard grad, the very kind of person that his former staff, the people who worked for him, Stephen Miller, et cetera, want to never be at Harvard uh, Law School. But he was. And he came out and graduated. And he's prosecuting you, Donald. And a black woman is doing that same exact thing in Georgia. And a black woman forced you to pay a $175 million fine that's out now also in question because the people who put it up, that might not be legit. Donald Trump is being held to account by the very multicultural, multiracial democracy that he's trying to dismantle. And for me, there's something poetic and actually wonderful about that. It hmm. says something good about our country that we're still capable of having that happen. Go DEI. My DEIs are bringing it home on today. Hmm. No. Your DEI. Wow, Joy. You know, I, I don't think that that was the intent of Martin Luther King Jr. when he talked about wanting to have a colorless society. In fact, I would argue that we were actually kind of nearly there. I mean, you had a black president elected twice. Because in America, it shouldn't be about the color of your skin. It should always be about how good you are at your job, how hard you're willing to work. And instead, there are people right now, like this woman, they want to take us back decades. They want to take us back to a time when there was a lot of animosity and there was no appreciation for both sides. And you know what? They're doing it for purely political reasons. And this woman is highly irresponsible because she's doing it for ratings, which she's still not getting, by the way, because they are not, not anywhere close to Fox News. So Joy, you keep trying. You keep trying. But think about the destruction that you're actually putting in place. And when I look at what's going on on college campuses right now, I see not just TikTok, not just Rashida and the likes of them, but I see MSNBC and I see this vitriol, this hatred that is coming through for an entire group of people. What is racism other than stereotyping everyone? Joy Reid is racist, clearly, against any Republican, any MAGA person. We've heard her tell us over and over and over again how bad they are. Trump supporters, you, if you're watching this show, if you voted for Donald Trump, even if you don't love him, if you voted for him. You are the problem. She hates you. They hate you. And I'm concerned about it. And if I were in charge over there, the guy from Comcast who does have a head on his shoulders and wants to make money, he's got a problem. I mean, just like Columbia University's president has a problem that she can't seem to deal with, the CEO of Comcast has a really big problem. We saw it. It emerged, you know. He, they went out and tried to hire the former head of the RNC. I mean, you may not have liked her, the Romney girl, right? But they gave her the job. And then you had this mutiny from the likes of Joy Reid and her friends over at MSNBC because the inmates are running the asylum and the guy that runs the whole shop and pays their salaries has no say. He's too afraid. Just like the university presidents that are too afraid at Columbia University where they can't stand up for the Jewish kids on campus or anybody else that just wants to go to class. I mean, what if you don't have a view on any of this and you just want to go to your class or maybe you want to go and study for your finals in the library? You can't because these people are out there with their tents. I wonder how many of them are really students. They ought to be looking for some student IDs. This is outrageous, outrageous stuff. And I'm telling you, 
We're at a crossroads in America. Do me a favor, if you can, go over to Americans for Prosperity, americansforprosperity.org, because they care about this stuff and they want to make sure that it stops, right? That we have freedom. Hey, there's nothing wrong with protesting. There's nothing wrong with expressing your opinion. But let's just think about what's going on. I mean, if anybody on the other side, right, if a bunch of white students were to say things that were so heinous, because these things are really heinous that these kids are saying about the Israeli students that they're in class with, if they said that, it would not be tolerated. So why would this be tolerated? How is that ever okay? Especially when you see the violent language that they are using, it's not okay. So Americans for Prosperity, they care about this stuff, believe me. And they're doing everything they can to make sure that we get good people in charge so that we have good policies that protect things like our freedom of speech while also simultaneously protecting us from violence. It's like, oh, I remember Black Lives Matter. Oh no, no violence here. You know, these are mostly peaceful protests. We've heard that a few too many times. Something has gone very much astray. Check them out when you can, americansforprosperity.org.